The Niners take on the Jets, 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff in New Jersey. The Niners are the seven-point favorite on the road here. Totals 42 and a hook. We're hitting at 79% in our last 17 extra daily picks on patreon.com slash Brock Page. We also won two out of our three NFL uh, tier premium selections on that site as well. For more information on how you can gain access to this exclusive premium sports betting content, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now, the Jets gave up 27 points to the Bills in their week one loss. They also failed to cover the number in that spot as well. The Jets are in the bottom three in rushing, bottom three in offensive time of possession. New York's failed to cover the number in four out of their last six ball games, dating back to last season. Williamson and Pirine are questionable. Le'Veon Bell, uh, Le'Veon Bell, excuse me, is out with a hammy. They're taking on a Niners team who ranks in the top 10 in the league in yards per play despite their opening day loss to Arizona. Jimmy G threw for 259 yards and a couple of touchdowns despite some accuracy issues. The 49er running back committee also rushed for over 120 yards on Sunday. The Niners have been victorious in seven out of their last nine on the road. Now keep an eye on George Kittle, however, as he's currently battling a knee problem. Now, total-wise, both teams saw their week one matchups fly over the total of 42 and a half. Uh, both defenses also gave up a combined 51 total points as well. Give me the 49ers minus seven in the over 42 and a half in that game. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick timeout and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for NFL week two. But before we dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, I just have to quickly remind you once again that we are hitting at 79% in our last 17 extra daily picks on patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also, uh, we were also victorious in two out of our three premium NFL tier selections on that site as well in week one. So for more information on how you can join in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we're going to take a look at Rams Eagles 1 p.m. Eastern kickoff at the Lincoln South Philly. The Rams are the one point favorite on the road, totals 46. Now, the Eagles blew a 17 point lead and gave up 27 unanswered in their week one loss to the team with no name. Philadelphia failed to establish a running game and they rushed for less than 60 yards in that contest. Philly currently ranks in the bottom three in yards per play. They're going to have to go to work uh, still without Will Parks and Alshon Jeffrey. And they're also uh, going to have to go to work without Vinny Curry. He's going to join them as well. Uh, Brandon Graham, Lane Johnson, Derek Barnett, Miles Sanders, they're all banged up and listed as questionable as well. Very key components to this Eagles squad. Uh, the Eagles patchwork offensive line is certainly going to face problems going up against Aaron Donald this Sunday. And unfortunately, Doug Peterson's inability to protect his quarterback when Washington's teeing off on him uh, is truly alarming as well. Uh, the Birds are uh, taking on a Rams team who took care of the Cowboys 20-17 to in their season opener. They held Dallas to just 17 points, and they rank in the top three uh, in the league in defensive time of possession, staying very fresh. Uh, Jordan Fuller leads the team in tackles with eight. Micah Kaiser has seven tackles and two uh, PBUs. Donald Floyd and Brockers all had sacks on Sunday as well. And if things go for the Eagles the way they did against Washington, uh, this Rams D-line should be on pace for about 16 sacks on Sunday. Now, total-wise, both offenses looked a little bit shaky in Week 1. And as bad as this Philly team played, they actually rank in the top three in the league in defensive yards uh, per play. They did show some bright spots defensively. This number looks a little bit high to me, so I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the LA Rams minus one and the under 46 points in that contest. All right, next matchup, Panthers-Bucks, 1 p.m. East. The Buccaneers are the nine-point favorite, totals 47 and a hook. This Buccaneer defense gave up 34 points in their opener, and they rank in the bottom 10 of the league in defense at time of possession. They're, they were on the field a whole lot. Uh, Tom Brady kind of looked like a shell of himself, but really, if you think about it, his performance wasn't all too different than what we saw last year. 
Uh, he wasn't great last year. Didn't look good in week one. Guy couldn't make the throws last year, and he's certainly, you know, struggling with those out patterns to his talented receivers this year. We saw that in week one. Of course, Bruce Arians kind of threw some shots at him in the postgame press conference, and I know what people say about Arians. That's what he does, but uh, they've been pretty personal throughout this whole Brady experience uh, since his signing. He really has been taking jabs at him. Now, if you're into historical data, the Bucks have failed to cover the number in five out of their last six hosting the Panthers. Uh, they're also just one in five against the number in their last six divisional games. Now, they are taking, a, uh, taking on a Panthers squad who scored 30 points in week one despite losing that contest. They look pretty good offensively. The Panthers are in the top 10 in passing, top 10 in yards per play. Teddy Bridgewater looked really good. He threw for 270 yards and a touchdown. Christian McCaffrey, well, no surprise there. He rushed for 96 yards and also had three catches for 38. He scored twice on the ground Sunday. And newly acquired Robbie Anderson, he looked awesome as well. He caught six balls from Teddy for 115 total yards and a touchdown himself. The uh, offensive problems certainly seem to be addressed in Charlotte. Uh, defensive guru Matt Rule is now going to have to do his part in the defensive side of things. Uh, the Panthers have won 10 out of their last 14 head-to-head meetings with the Bucks over the years, if you're into historical trends. Now, total-wise, both teams flew way over their respective totals in Week 1. The offenses combined uh, for 53 total points, while their defenses gave up 68 combined. So with all that said and done, I think Carolina should keep this one close. Give me the Carolina Panthers plus 9 in the over 47.5 in that game. Next matchup. Team with no name taking on the Cardinals, 4.05 p.m. Eastern start time. Arizona's the six and a half point favorite, totals 47 and a hook. Arizona took care of the defending NFC champs by the final of 24 to 20 in their opener. Kyler Murray threw for 230 yards and also ran for 91. DeAndre Hopkins had 14 catches for 151 yards. He currently leads the league in receptions. Now the Cardinals offense ranks in the top three in rushing, top 10 in offensive time of possession, they're going to take on a ferocious Washington D line, but Kyler's escapability and mobility uh, should be enough to keep them out of trouble. The cards are, uh, they're not going to just, uh, he's not going to let you tee off on them. And the cards are taking on a Washington team who really kind of took advantage of a depleted Eagles team in game one. Uh, and despite being 1 0, their performance was rather lackluster in week one. I'm not going to lie. For the exception of their D-line, the football team ranks in the bottom three in the league in passing yards, bottom five in rushing, and looking inept and anemic at times, this Washington offense averaged just 3.4 yards per play in their opener against Philadelphia. Now, Davis, Fuller, and Charles are all listed as questionable for Sunday's action, and when it comes to the total on this one, I'm certainly not expecting a whole lot of fireworks out of this Washington offense. And once again, this Arizona defense ranks in the top 10 in defensive time of possession. So it uh, really does a good job staying fresh, staying off the field. Give me the Cardinals, minus six and a half, and the under, 47 and a hook in that game. Next contest, Chiefs Chargers, 425 p.m. East. Kansas City's minus eight and a half, totals 47 and a hook. The Chargers are plus 324, an upset win. And despite getting the W in week one, the Chargers really struggled with a bad Cincinnati team led by a quarterback making his first career start, and they were actually also just a chip shot away from going into overtime. The Chargers rank in the bottom half of the league in yards per play, bottom 10 in passing. These guys just can't move the ball. Tyrod Taylor completed just 53% of his passes, and he was sacked twice. Taylor failed to throw a touchdown pass through the air as well. Now, Tranquil's out. Pouncey, Turner, and Jackson are all questionable for Los Angeles. The Chargers have failed to cover the number in their last six games hosting the Chiefs. So if you're into historical trends, if you're a little superstitious, that's pretty alarming. They're also winless in their last six divisional contests. Now they're taking on a Kansas City club who literally returned to form in week one. Didn't even look like they had a week off from the time they won the Super Bowl. Uh, it was certainly business as usual for KC as they put up 34 points in the Houston uh, Texans opener. Patty Mahomes completed 75% of his passes, and he threw three touchdowns. Rookie Clyde Edwards-Hilaire rushed for, uh, for 25 times 
for a buck 38 and a touchdown. He looked fantastic. Watkins, Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill all had touchdown receptions. Even kicker Harrison Bucker was uh, good on four PATs and two field goals in the kicking game. Uh, the Chiefs are just well-rounded. They're in the top three in the league in rushing, top five in offensive time of possession. And in addition to winning nine out of their last 10 head-to-head meetings with Los Angeles, the Chiefs also successfully covered the point spread in 70% of those meetings. Uh, Kansas City's also covered their last eight straight point spreads against the AFC. Now, total-wise, KC's dominant time of possession combined with the Chargers' inability to move the ball could be a prime recipe for an under here. LA's Week 1 game with the Bengals fell well under the posted number. So with all that said and done, give me the Kansas City Chiefs minus 8.5 and and the under 47 and a hook in that game. All right, next matchup, Ravens-Texans, 425 p.m. Eastern kickoff in Houston. The Ravens are the 6.5 point favorite, totals 51 and a hook. And if you like the Texans in an upset victory at home, they're plus 260 for some money line cash. Now, the uh, Texans do rank in the bottom five in the league in offensive time of possession. They're in the bottom half of the league in rushing as well. They've lost eight out of their last 10 head to head meetings with Baltimore. And they'll have to go to work potentially without the uh, services of David Johnson, Cole, and Greenard. Uh, those guys are banged up right now, listed as questionable. Houston's also in the top three in the league in most rush yards allowed per game. They're taking on a Baltimore club who just absolutely decimated the Browns in week one by the final of 38-6. to Lamar Jackson, he completed 80% of his passes for 275 yards and three touchdowns. He also ran seven times for 45 yards as well. Marquise Brown had over 100 yards receiving for the Ravens. Andrews had a couple of TD receptions from that tight end spot. And, of course, Snead had four catches for 64 yards and a score himself. They rank in the top 10 in pass yards, top 5 in yards on average per play. The Baltimore Ravens have won 10 out of their last 11 contests against the AFC. They also rank in the top 5 in pass yards allowed, top 5 in yards allowed per play. Very good defensively. Patrick Queen, the young guy, leads the club in tackles with eight. He also has a sack and a forced fumble. LJ Fort, he has six tackles along for uh, along with a tackle for loss. And Calias Campbell also had three pass deflections from the D-line. When it comes to the total in this one, four out of Baltimore's last five games at NRG Stadium got over the posted total. Meanwhile, the Texans on the other side went over the number in week one themselves. Give me the Ravens, minus six and a half. In the over, 51 and a hook in that game. Next matchup, Patriots-Seahawks. Sunday night primetime game, and that's going to be an 8.20 p.m. Eastern kickoff. Now, the Seahawks are the four-point favorite at home here. They're laying four points, totals 45. The Patriots are plus $1.75 for an outright victory. Now, the Patriots also rank in the top three in the league in rushing, top five in offensive time of possession. They're coming off a very solid 21-11 divisional victory over the Dolphins in Week 1. Cam Newton ran for 75 yards and two touchdowns. Sonny Michelle also scored on the ground as well. Cam completed 79% of his passes, very efficient, and he found Julian Edelman five times for 57 yards. This Patriot defense, like I talked about last week, continues to look absolutely dominant. Top 10 in pass yards allowed, top 10 in yards allowed per play. Phillips and Gilmore each had an interception. Uh, Jackson had a pick as well. Uh, three interceptions to start off this season. Rivers had a sack. Chase Winovich uh, had six tackles and one for loss. Uh, New England, this defense ranks in the top 10 and fewest rush yards allowed. They've also successfully covered the number in five out of their last six meetings with the NFC West. They're taking on a Seattle team who gave up 25 points to Atlanta in their season opener. They rank in the top three in most pass yards allowed, top five in most yards allowed per play. Now, Seattle's failed to cover the number in seven out of their last nine ball games at CenturyLink Field. Not all that great against the number at home. And as good as Russ and the receiving core looked uh, in week one against Atlanta, they rank in the bottom 10 in rushing. They did not establish a rushing game. Now, total-wise, I can't see the Seahawks putting up 38 on this New England D. 
The Patriot offense and defense were both absolutely dominant in time of possession in their opener. Give me the New England Patriots plus four, keeping this one close in the under 45 in that contest. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup of the show. It is going to be Saints Raiders, 8.15 p.m. Eastern start time on Monday night. And this will be the inaugural NFL contest in Allegiant Stadium in Sin City. The Saints are the five and a half point favorite in the Raiders home opener. Totals 49 and a hook. And if you think uh, Las Vegas will get lucky in their home opener, they're plus $2 for an outright win. Now the Raiders gave up 30 points to the Carolina Panthers in their season opener. It was a winning effort. They got the W, but they really struggled stopping Carolina. They're in the top 10 in the league in most pass yards allowed, top 10 in most yards allowed per play. Young, Brown, and Ruggs are all listed as questionable for the home opener for Vegas. And they are taking on a Saints team who absolutely dominated Tom Brady in the Bucks in their season opener. That was an 11-point victory where they put up 34 total points. Now, the New Orleans Saints are in the top 10 in the league in offensive time of possession, top 10 in rush yards allowed. C.J. Gardner-Johnson led the charge with 10 tackles in Week 1, nine of them solo. Granderson, Hendrickson, and Davis each had a sack themselves. Uh, Williams and Janoris Jenkins each picked off Tom Brady as well, and Jenkins' interception resulted in a pick six. The Saints currently rank in the top 10 in scoring as well. Of course, uh, can't forget about Drew Brees. He threw for a couple of TDs. Kamara and Sanders were on the receiving end of those scores. And when it comes to the total in this one, both teams saw their week one contest fly way over the posted number. Six out of the Saints' last nine contests, dating back to last season, also got over the number. A lot of overs for this Saints team recently. Give me the Saints minus five and a half, spoiling the Vegas home opener and the over 49 and a half in that game. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Wednesday to you. Yeah, Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy hump day to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage.